Hello there, my name is Jason Caldwell. I'm the lead developer for the S2 member plugin for WordPress. In this video, we're going to cover the advanced topic of PHP conditionals. Now, in this video, I'm going to assume that you've already seen some of the introductory videos covering the basics of S2 member and that you've already been through most of the S2 member option panels because I'm going to move a little bit more quickly through the segments of this video than in the previous videos. Okay, first of all, the advanced way that we're referring to using advanced conditionals requires some PHP scripting. Okay, and in order to use PHP scripting inside a post or a page, you will need to have the exec PHP plugin installed first. Now, this is a very lightweight plugin, and for a developer or if you're for an advanced user, it's almost a must have. Um, in fact, I don't have a single installation of WordPress that I run that does not have this plugin installed. Okay, I'm going to switch tabs here for a moment and show you at WordPress.org you can go to the Extend tab to the Plugins uh, section and find this plugin, Exec PHP, and download it right here and install it. Or alternatively, you can come here to your Plugins menu, click Add New, and add it right through your WordPress dashboard. Now all it does is it allows you to execute PHP code snippets like you see in the examples here inside a post or a page or even inside a text widget if you like. Alright, so now what is a PHP conditional tag? Well, it's very simple and, and even though there's some PHP scripting required here, even novice users can usually read these examples and, and find their way through implementing these tags because we're only using just a very limited subset of PHP here. Uh, just basic checks to see if something is true or not. So a conditional tag starts off by saying if something is true, then we will display one thing, and if it's not, we'll display something else. So in this example, we're saying if the user is logged in, then we will show some content here between this curly bracket and that curly bracket. Okay, so that's how a conditional works. If that was true, we would display this content. Otherwise, if it was not true, we would display something else. All right, and that's it. That's how a PHP conditional statement works. Now, understanding that, let's take a look at a little bit more complex example where we implement two different functions. One of them is isUserLogedIn, and then this additional conditional function that tests to see if the current user can do something specifically. So this is saying if the user is logged in and, that's what these double ampersand signs mean, just like if you were to, you could just take those out and put in the word and, okay, well you wouldn't actually want to do that because this is how PHP expects it to be written. But that's what it means. If the user is logged in and the current user can access S2 member level 1, then we would display this, and otherwise we would display this. Okay, so that's just another example that implements an additional uh, function that is considered a conditional tag, if the current user can. All right, so let's move on down to a more complex example. And this one chains addition, this one chains multiple conditional statements together using the else if logic. Okay, so here we're saying if the user is logged in and the current user can access level four, we'll show this. Else if they can if the user is logged in and they can access level three, we'll do this. Else if this, else if this is true, else if this is true, and if none of these were true, then by default we will show this. Okay, so this is a a set of chained conditionals using the else if variation of, of PHP conditional tags. Now another important thing to point out, and there's no examples given here of this because we don't want to overwhelm a novice user here, but if you're familiar with PHP or, or once you get the basic uh, handle on how this works, you can see that conditional tags can be nested. So for example, if this statement was true, and this code was going to be displayed, if this content was going to be displayed, we could actually take and put another conditional here and nest these as deeply as we need to in order to work it out uh, exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so sometimes one statement would be true, but then we want to check something else. So you can do one, two, three, four, all the way down into two or three different levels if you like. All right, now here's another example below that, that, can, that combines an S2 member API constant, okay, which is just an identifying name, which is associated with a value. In this case, this is just going to be true or false. If the user is logged in as a member, 
So if this is true, okay, then we would display this. Otherwise, if the current user is logged in, so this is if they're logged in as a member or their level is one or higher, and this is just if they're logged in, meaning if they're logged in at all, okay? Now these constants, these API constants, there's several of these and they're documented in this additional section here called S2 member PHP API constants. All right, so one other thing I want to cover here is what we're actually saying in a statement like this example shows where we say current user can access S2 member level one. Before you go and go, hog, go off and go hog wild on implementing conditionals, it's important to understand what you're actually what you're actually testing for here. So let's move down here where we explain that membership levels provide incremental access. So a member at level four, okay, will automatically have access to level zero, one, two, and three because access is, is incremental. So if you're at level four, you will have access to everything beneath you also automatically. So a level four member would be able to access levels three, two, one, and zero. If you were at level one, you would have access to everything at level one and also at level zero. Okay? So seeing this, or understanding that, we can see that the current user can function here. When it tests to see if a, if a user can access level one, that does not mean that they are at level one. It just means that they can access level one. If I wanted to see if they were exactly at level one, I would remove this access underscore from the beginning. So instead, it would just say current user can S2 member level one, and that would indicate whether or not the, the user was at exactly at level one. Okay, so it's just important to realize that before you start using advanced conditionals. Otherwise, you could write stuff that really doesn't work out the way you think it would work out. Okay, so in the next segment, we're going to take example number three here, and we're going to integrate this into our login welcome page, which is a great place to put some advanced conditionals. All right, so we'll pick back up on this in the very next segment.